Hello, you have your ticket? You don't have one? No problem. Just hit the subscription button below. Come on in. Hey everyone, DFG here, guys. Hey, um, I just wanted to share an observation from earlier this morning and, uh, and, uh, and some additional commentary as it relates to that observation. You know, I got up and I'm looking at, um, I wanted to just see what was going on with mainstream media news. And of course, I, I kind of channel scanned the, um, the cable news network, CNN, and they were talking about, you know, the Russian gate craziness. I guess they'll never get beyond that. And then I go over to Fox News and I see Fox News, um, uh, you know, sharing, you know, um, propaganda about uh, Venezuela. And I mean, they're going in hard on Venezuela today. I mean, just, you know, they they killed aid. They, I mean, these aid workers and, you know, of course, you know, they're starving their people. You, you, you probably already know the narrative. But let me give you, and, and I had to turn Fox News off. I just couldn't take it anymore. Because it's it's just so dishonest, and, and and for you guys who don't believe this, all I'm saying to you, it, as, as an intelligent human being, as intelligent as you are, or believe that you are, you should always get both sides of every story, get the facts, and then take a stand. You follow me? Based off of those facts, but you should never, you know, just take one side of the story, you know, without any. Um, consideration of whether or not you could be being misled or in some cases intentionally lied to. Now let's get back. You know, the situation with Venezuela reminds me of something that happened in this country, you know, four or 500 years ago. And that's when, you know, some of the early European settlers came to, to, to the Americas. And when they came to America, you know, as pilgrims, you know, on a pilgrimage, pilgrims on a pilgrimage, you know, looking for a better place, looking for the land of opportunity, look, looking for a place, according to them, where they could practice their religious beliefs without any kind of restraint from England, whether they would be able to get away from the oppression of the king and the queen of England. That was what they said. Now, whether or not that's true, some of the historians out there, you know, know better than me. But that's the guise in which they came. And when they saw America being what it was, the land truly of milk and honey, how things grew here and how that they had animals here, you know, buffalo here, t wild turkeys here, you know, just, just a land full of everything, tobacco, coin, rich soil. And they saw how the Native Americans were prospering here and how well they were living here. You follow me? Well, then they realized that where they came from, a lot of those things were not available to them. You know, there was famish in the land uh, in England when they left. There was disease rampant in the land when they left. Hostility, violence, you know what I'm saying? Mayhem in the land where they left. And religious oppression in the land where they left. And here, the beautiful Americas, where all these things, you know, were available without any true oppression. Or anyone to stop them, except for those natives out there who seem to be pretty friendly at the end of the day. OK, seem to be really welcoming and arms open. All right. And so these and, and if some of you guys say, well, no, that's not true. Well, then explain to me what, what Thanksgiving came from then. The Thanksgiving holiday that you celebrate every year, um, according to U.S. history. OK, I'm not even going to put that on you and say your history. According to U.S. history, it came because the Native Americans, the Indians, as some people called them, Embrace the pilgrims, right? The, those who were on a religious pil uh, pilgrimage, and they gave them corn, and and they gave them, you know, they they helped them to plant the soil, and and you know, and really welcomed them in. Come on, so let's let's not act like we forgot about that, okay? So don't, you know, how you say, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Don't, don't don't you know, don't kill the messenger. We know that's U.S. history, perverted or not. We know that's being taught in the schools. At least it was being taught in the schools. It's been a long time since I was being taught that basic, you know, U.S. history. That said, I look at the situation and they came in, you know, under the guise of peacemakers, came in under the guise of helping the Native Americans, you know, and they looked at them as though they were heathens because they did not know, you know, according to him, God. And what happened was that as they started to push their way in, I'm sorry, into the Americas, the Native Americans start pushing back, saying, wait a minute now, we don't have a problem sharing these things with you, 
But we have a big problem with you commandeering these things and feeling like you have some right to take what's rightfully ours. At the end of the day, you're the guest. So don't come in here feeling like you can just, you know, manhandle us, commandeer our resources, our lands, you follow them, and treat us, you know, like somehow, like we're second class citizens. But, you know, under the guise of they're heathens and they're savages, you know, we're going to come in there and, and, and give them what they really need. And the rest is history. Well, you look at the Venezuela situation, and it's hard for me not to make that comparison, guys. I mean, you know, if you look at the Venezuelan economy, first of all, it's a sovereign country. How does America decide who's going to be the president of Venezuela? I'm going to say that again. I want you to think critically here. And I keep thinking about you guys who have so much bias in your heart. And I somehow want to try to convince you. And I know I can't. That's why I hesitate from time to time. Not that I give a shit about whether or not you're going along with what I'm saying or accepting of what I'm saying. I just wish you, you would listen to what I'm saying, I guess. And so moving right along. So here it is. You know, we, can you imagine if a sovereign, another country, let's say President Putin came here and said, you know what? We believe that uh, Hillary should be president of the United States, Hillary Clinton, because she had three million more votes than Donald Trump. So we feel like your election is illegitimate because the person who got the most votes should be the president of the United States. Therefore, we are going to say Hillary is the president of the United States. And if you guys have a problem with that, we're going to send our military over here to, you know, and make sure you understand what's going to happen. In other words, you have no choice in it. That's what's going on right now with Guado in Venezuela. OK, America has handpicked the president of a sovereign country. OK, let me move forward. Give you a little history. And OK, so just so I don't lose you here. Back to the Native American. So we just like we came in with our Europeans came into the Americas with the Bible, Christendom. We got to we got to save these savages from themselves. That's no different than you see what's going on right now with the U.S. aid. You know, we got to go in and help the people because they're starving to death. Now, we're not going to tell you about all the sanctions we put on Venezuela for the last two or three years that hurt them economically hurt their ability to, to, to get resources from around the world. I mean, at, we, we froze Maduro's uh, bank account. I think he had $1.2 million in gold. We got England to freeze the man money. That'd be like me going to the bank, telling the banker, hey, your money and your account, I want them to freeze that money in your account. And when you go to get the money so you have money to feed your children, they tell you, I'm sorry, we're not giving you the money because Dale told us not to give it to you. I think at that point, shit would hit the fan. Would you agree with that? But that's in essence, just to show you how, how obnoxious and how absurd and how, uh, how vicious <laughs> we have treated Venezuela over the last two or three years for one reason, guys, and one reason only. Just like the early Europeans came here and they wanted the resources of this land, the, 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 the riches of this land to enrich themselves, we're in Venezuela doing the same thing, history repeating itself again, after they're all. Venezuela is the number one oil producing nation, or have the number one oil reserves, I'm sorry, in the world. 300 million barrels, 300 million. And guys, if you think that we're in there uh, just for, you know, just because we care about the Venezuelan people, ask yourself the question, what happened in Uganda, Rwanda? All these other places all over the world where genocide happened. What's going on in Yemen? Why aren't we in those places under the name of democracy? I know why. I can tell you why. Because they have nothing that we want. That's why we're not in there. All right? Venezuela is, a, is, is, is the new land of milk and honey for the elite, the oligarchs, the, ol the oligarchs in this country. You know what I'm saying? The owners of the Halliburtons and the Exxon Mobiles and the you know what I'm saying? And, and, and Chevron and some of these other corporations. The filthy rich. And the people who are siding with Guado, they were the old filthy rich in Venezuela. 10% of the people in Venezuela before the Chavez regime, Hugo Chavez, before his, his, his regime, 
10% were owning 90% of the wealth in Venezuela. And guess how they were getting their money? Through the privatization of the oil in Venezuela. Why 90% of the people in Venezuela were in poverty. You say, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Let me give you a statistic. And when, when Chavez was elected president, in 1997, 1998, the poverty rate in Venezuela was over 70%. So seven out of 10 Venezuelans were in poverty before Chavez took over. In 12 years of Chavez's presidency, Hugo Chavez, the poverty rate had gone from 71% to less than 20%, or right at 20%. Now, how was Chavez bad for Venezuela? He took the, and what did he do? I'm sorry. He nationalized the oil. He took the oil back from the 10% rich and gave it to everybody in the country. Now, he didn't go and rob these people. These people were robbing the country. What he simply said is that you're not going to rob me. In other words, you went to the bank and said, Dale is not taking my money. It's my money. We'll burn this bank down before, you let, before we let you take, let you, let Dale take our money and tell us I can't get our money out of that bank. That's my money. What Chavez simply did is said, the all in the Venezuela belong to the Venezuelans, all of us, not just the 10 percent. And so a lot of the, the bourgeois, the elite in Venezuela, they left and they went to Florida. And that's who that's the group that's behind this coup right now. That group and the politicians who are paid off by that group and those who know that they can enrich themselves with the national with the national national right resources. All in Venezuela. Simple and plain. This is history repeating itself 400 years, 500 years later. The same thing that happened in the Americas to the early natives is the same, under the same guise as what's going on in Venezuela. And they're using mainstream media like Fox and some of these other ones to, to manipulate you, to give you half truths. You know what I'm saying? They're going in and instigating, you know, uh, hostilities. They're going in and intentionally you know, uh, starting, you know, you know, wars, and insurrection inside of the country. They're using Colombia as a big place to do that. Yet they're telling you that, you know, it's not about, you know, us wanting their resources. It's about Maduro starving his people because he won't let the United States bring in aid. But they're not telling you about the hundreds and hundreds of tons of aid coming in from other countries like Cuba, for an example. They're not talking about that. Brazil. Helping them. They're not telling you about that. China helping. They're not telling you about that. It's almost as though United U.S. aid is the only aid in the world. Last I checked, rice is rice whether it came from, you know, Chicago, if it came from, you know, Vietnam. Rice is still rice. So what does it matter where they're getting their aid from if they're getting the aid? And they wouldn't need that aid, is my point, if we had not sanctioned them, frozen their monies, told other countries who we're holding their money that if you do business with Venezuela, we're not going to do business with you. Hostage. Holding them hostage. Legal extortion is what you're looking at. Illegal extortion under the guise of legal. Because we the people, again, are silent and quiet. Because at the end of the day, what happens to Venezuela benefits us at, at the worst and does not really do us any harm at the least. And so we're taking the road much traveled. In other words, turning our head, looking the other way and letting this atrocity go forward and allowing this government under President Trump, Mike Pompeo, John Bolton and the rest of the group, including those Venezuelans uh, exiles, promote civil war in a country that's sovereign from the United States, independent of the United States and only want to do what's best for the people in Venezuela. Now that's the truth. Straight way. Hard, cold facts. Do your homework, like I tell you all the time. Don't take my word for it, but use me as a vehicle to go challenge the narrative. You know, prove me wrong. I'm okay with that. Leave a comment and say, hey, look, we looked at it and everything you said, it's not true. Or, you know, we agree. But more importantly, we can't just sit on the sidelines, guys, and be quiet. Because ultimately that same government that's turning, you know, that's, that's supporting aggression against those innocent people one day may be turning against you and I. Peace. Talk to you later. Bye now.